Cookin has the most powerful and customizable user interface of any desktop application that I know of. But I think that most people don't take advantage of these capabilities simply because they don't know about them or they don't know how to use them. So I'm going to show you. One of the things that you'll notice first as you move your mouse across the screen is when you get to this part you see it change. And so what that means is that you can click on this and drag it and you can adjust it. And so if I would encourage you to go ahead and adjust this just the way that you like. I I don't really care for it where the buttons wrap to the next line right here. So I kind of prefer it here. But really what matters most is whether you have enough, you know, if you have a lo long list of cookbooks with really long names, you may want to make this wider. Or if your recipe names are really long and you want to see them better, then you can widen this. Or if you don't need all that white space there, then you can make this more narrow as well. The other thing that you can do is click on this minimize button right here and on the minimize button right here. And I think a lot of people are like, oh no, I'm afraid because if I do that, then how do I get it back? You know what I mean? So people are just afraid to try it. Go ahead and try it because you can figure it out and then once you do. And that way, you know, by minimizing those, now when I'm browsing recipes on the internet, I have a lot more real estate on the screen that I can use for browsing purposes. And I don't really need that cooking bookshelf or that recipes view so I can see the web page in all its glory. Now I'm getting hungry looking at this. And to get those back again, you'll see right here, there's a restore button. You just click on that. And there's one over here for the recipe view. And when I click on that, it restores it. So I'm right back to where I was when I started. So if you do nothing more than simply minimize these views when you want more real estate, I'll be happy. <laughs> now there's some additional things you can do as well. If, for example, you want to see a long list of recipes and you don't want to scroll, if I'm looking at all the recipes in a whole cookbook, for example, and it's a long list, you can click on this and drag it over here. When you see the mouse change to that, you can drop it. And now you've got the recipe list here. So as you're clicking through here, you can see a longer list of the recipes. Maybe I want more space to see all of the main dishes. You can do some more things too. If I wanted, I could drag this over to this side. So I've got my cookbook library on this side over here and my recipe view over here on the right. And the recipes themselves are in the middle. So that's kind of neat. Or I could take this tab and drag it over and drop it here side by side. So I've got my bookshelf here and my recipes here. And I can click around and see things and so forth. So you can do some pretty neat things with these views here. And you can customize it just the way that you want. For now, I'm going to go ahead and put it down here. And by the way, you can even adjust this too. See, there's this. If I wanted more space like that, I can customize it. Or if I wanted to see more of my cookbooks and expand these things, I can do that too. So have fun with this. Have fun with it. It's powerful. You can have fun with these tabs over here on the right side of the screen as well. For example, if I'm putting a meal together, I may want to choose a main dish like citrus grilled salmon. Let's go with that. And I may want to leave this open. And so I'm going to go ahead and click on this button right here on the toolbar and open a new tab. And that opens another one. And I'm going to find a good side dish. So with that, let's go with cranberry pecan squash, how about? Okay, so that would be a good thing to accompany my salmon. And I may want to serve a soup with this. So I'm going to open another tab and click on the soups here and go with, how about this black bean soup? That would go good with salmon, maybe. So now I can switch. I've got my main dish, my side dish, and a soup, and so forth. So use these tabs. You can open a lot of them at once. And you can even view multiple tabs simultaneously. So for example, let's say I'm tired of switching between these. Let's get a good recipe going here. Let's pick a dessert recipe to go with this meal. How about buttermilk pie? Now we're talking. Yum. Look at that. Oh, baby. Okay, so I got my salmon, I got my side dish, I got soup, and I've got my dessert here. But what if I want to see a couple of these at the same time while I'm preparing dinner? What I'm going to do is minimize this bookshelf and minimize the recipes view to give myself more space here. And now I'm going to go ahead and click on buttermilk pie, and I'm going to drag it. And now you can see those lines appear again, and cooking is trying to figure out where I want to put this. And so once I see that vertical line right there, I'm going to let go. And now cooking's going to split my screen. So I've got my salmon here and my buttermilk pie right here. So that's kind of cool to be able to see two recipes side by side. If I have a really big display, 
which I don't really hear, but let's say that I did. I might even want to see three recipes at the same time. So I'm going to click on this cranberry pecan squash and drag it down here and drop it. Now I've got my citrus grilled salmon here, my squash here, my buttermilk pie here. And while we're at it, why what the heck, why not put the black bean soup down here as well? Now I've got four recipes that I'm viewing simultaneously. And why not? How fun is that? You can rearrange the way these views appear. Now I've got them side by side. Look at that, all vertical. One, two, three, four. And you can do all kinds of things. You can go down here like this. So now I've got the one recipe here on the right. And these two in the middle. So, I mean, you can totally customize the way this looks. And let's say you switch to your menu planning perspective. You're going to see all these things change and shift around. And now I can see my menu planning. I can see these things here. And when I want to go back, I just click on Recipe Browsing Perspective button, and it goes right back to where it was. So have fun with these tabs and make it look just the way that you want. If you ever want to go back, like I say, a lot of people are like, oh, no, I'm going to get it all messed up, and then I'll never get it back. Don't worry about that. You'll figure it out. You just click on it and drag it to go back. You click on this one and drag it to go back to here. And click on this one and drag it, and it'll go back to there. And we're right back where we started. I can go ahead here and restore this and restore this one. And look at that. We're right back where we were. So don't be afraid. Instead of minimizing these two, you can actually maximize this one too. There we go. That's even easier. It's one click. And then you just click this to restore it. There's other aspects of the user interface that are customizable as well. When you go to the brand view, for example, as I move my mouse across the screen, you'll see that it, oh, there's something there. Do you see that? That's what we call a sash. And if I want more space for the brand detail, I can actually click on this and drag it over to here. Another example would be maybe the units list. Let's take a look at that one. Yeah, see, there's all this white space here. I don't really need that. So I can adjust this and say, no, none of my units are really that long. So there we go. That works. And the same thing with the recipe view, too. Maybe I don't need that much space for the quantity in this column, but the units get compressed and so forth. So I don't want to show this brand that much. So you can totally customize this view. You can expand and collapse these sections. So when I'm typing in the directions for my recipe, I may want to collapse these two to give myself a lot of space here. And similarly, when I'm doing the ingredient part of my recipe, I may want to collapse this one and expand this one so I've got plenty of room for the ingredients. There's some additional customizations you can do in the uh, Cooking Preferences dialog. You can say when capturing internet recipes, display new recipes in a new tab and split the two vertically. Let's take a look at what that looks like. That's how I've got this set, which is not really the default way. So when I'm searching on the internet, let's say I search for a chicken stew recipe. And here's one from Taste of Home. Let's say I click on this creamy chicken and broccoli stew recipe. That sounds pretty good. Man, I'm hungry. I need to eat dinner. Let's say that I want this recipe. When I click the capture button on the toolbar, now cooking is going to split the view. And it's going to display the two side by side, except I have this unit screen open and this brand's one too. Let's close some of these. Okay, so here's my chicken, creamy chicken and broccoli stew recipe. Here's the web page. And I can see that right here. And here's the recipe that I captured in cooking. And I can see that right here. And so sometimes it's helpful to have the two side by side when you're capturing internet recipes. And after I'm done, when I'm finished capturing this and I'm ready to go back, I can just click on switch to the recipe browsing perspective and it puts everything back to the way that it was. So take advantage of these powerful features and customize your recipe view so it looks exactly the way that you want. Well, I'm going to go have some dinner. I might even go and make this black bean soup because it looks really good to me. It looks pretty easy to make too, by the way. Look, it's got kidney beans, black beans, corn, Italian. Oh, and notice that my units are abbreviated. That's because I did I customized them in this cooking preferences screen. I clicked this checkbox that says use abbreviated units. And that's why they're showing up smaller or shorter like that because they're abbreviated. And I can disable that. And I also said, you know what? 
show me recipes in the DVO format, which is ingredient first, then quantity, and then unit, because it's easier when I'm browsing and considering recipes if I can just see what they call for. So that's kind of fun. I like that. And I like the abbreviated units too. And don't worry, you can switch back. If I uncheck this and I go back and say, let's display the ingredients in the traditional format, quantity, unit, ingredient. Now when I click OK, Cooking's going to redraw this screen and it's going to show it in the normal way. There's so many cool features of this software. It really does a lot and it's so fun. And I think a lot of people just don't know about these features. They haven't tried them and they're afraid to kind of mess something up, but play with it, have fun with it, and enjoy it. I hope this video helps you and I hope your experience with cooking is a great one. Thank you so much for the feedback and your emails and your support. Thanks for watching this video. I hope you have a great weekend. I'm going to go make some pie. Take care.